We are going to be discussing more in detail the phenomenon of single slit diffraction and covering the 9.2 section 4HL on single slit diffraction. In 4.4, we were introduced to single slit diffraction. We know that it is a phenomenon where waves spread as they pass through an opening or as the wave passes around an obstacle. We covered how the size of the barrier's slit or opening that the wave passes through can affect the amount of diffraction the wave undergoes. As the slit is increased, we see less bending of the waves. In particular, when the slit is less than or equal to that of the wavelength, we see the most prominent amount of bending of the waves. And as the aperture becomes greater than the wavelength, then we see less bending. So we know that diffraction is most evident when there is either the opening or the object being similar in size to that of the wave. Notice here that when the size of the wavelength is close to the size of the object as seen here in the left picture, there is more bending of the waves as opposed to the picture on the right that shows much shorter wavelengths to that of the same object. There is less, if not any, diffraction shown in this picture. And we also show that there's an area of shadow. Uh, there is an area that is called the shadow region where the waves do not enter. Notice the top picture here with a light having a wavelength of 435.0 nanometers, which is the color violet. And compare this to that of another wavelength of light, which is of 660 nanometers for its wavelength. Notice how much more spread out the longer wavelength of the red light is. If we look at the fringes on the detector screen over here, notice how this correlates to the width of the central maximum of both of these wavelengths. Also notice all the colors on the detector screen are of the same color. Over here we have the detector screen showing the color purple and this is because the light that is being projected through the aperture is monochromatic and monochromatic just means that the light has one frequency or one wavelength. This is also true for the red light that is used here as it's projected through the aperture. Because it is of only one wavelength, we have only red fringes here showing alongside with the dark bands. White light acts differently. White light, on the other hand, contains all the range of colors on the visible spectrum. And this is Roy G. Biv, right? And each of these have their own wavelength depending on the color. We know that the longer the wavelength, the more diffraction occurs. When white light passes through a slit, here is the incident white light, the varying waves split up and travel at different angles and are seen to be separated accordingly, as seen on the diagram over here. Because the different wavelengths get diffracted by different amounts, the white light gets split into its spectrum of colors. Additionally, since the light is incoherent, meaning that the wavelengths are not in phase, you don't see any dark and bright spots as you would with monochromatic light, such as with the purple or with the red light that we saw on the slide prior to this. This is the midpoint, the central maximum point right here. So notice here that there's a mirror effect because as the white light is coming through the aperture, we have a splitting in both directions. And because there is red light in the white light that comes out over here, it spreads out like this. And then as the white light spreads out over here, then the different wavelengths show up on this side over here. So we have a mirror effect when we're looking at the detector screen. Let's revisit this slide. Notice the wavelengths are shorter in the top picture. These waves do not show as much alteration when encountering the barrier as in the bottom picture down here. Here you see all of the waves actually bending over here and this is just characteristic of longer wavelengths. They're able to bend more. And so here we have the sound shade being created by this barrier and the high frequency short wavelengths just go in this direction with little diffraction happening as opposed to the low frequency long wavelengths are able to go around this area and there is no sound shade at all between the barrier and 
the building all. So we observe and understand that lower frequency, longer wavelengths diffract more. Let's make sure that you have this information down. Feel free to add it into your other T notes if you have the space or you're more than welcome to start over, your choice. Just make sure that you have that as your wavelength becomes longer, the diffraction becomes greater. And then this was already um, mentioned in your T note saying that if the slit is less than or equal to that of the wavelength, then there would be more diffraction. This is the new portion that you need to make sure you have in your T note somewhere. We are going to become more familiar with the diffraction pattern located here. Remember that this diffraction pattern is what we would see on the screen some distance from the light that enters through the slit over here on the left. Let's look more closely at the diffraction pattern. Here is a close-up of a diffraction pattern of a single slit diffraction. Notice that this is in my T-notes, so I do want you to go ahead and try to sketch this into your notes so then that way you can actually label all of the parts. So this is the distribution of diffracted light as the incident wave comes through the aperture and we notice that we have a high amplitude here with different amplitudes that are much more decreased as you move away from the center. This central point right here is called the central maximum and this is where we have the maximum intensity and amplitude. And notice here that it is split in two so we have half of the amplitude over on the left and half of the amplitude located on the right. There are also am other amplitudes that are decreased as you move away from the center. And each of these amplitudes are where we experience constructive interference. Notice the dark bands on either side are also labeled. So these points right here where it's low points after the amplitude has experienced its highest point down here, we call this the first minimum, and we have this point right here as being the second minimum. This would also go in the opposite direction, so this would be your first minimum and your second minimum, and these are equivalent to each other. They're just in opposite directions from the central maximum. Notice that as you go in either direction, you can see where the wave is in its oscillation. Here we have negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, and then if we go in the right direction, we go pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. Remember that one complete cycle is 2 pi, or 360. Here is the equation for single slit diffraction. It is theta equals the wavelength lambda divided by b. The variable b is used in your packet. However, you may see other variables such as a used in your textbook and elsewhere. Notice that the angle is in radians. However, the length can be in any measurement so long as you are consistent throughout your calculations. Now the question is, how did they get this equation? Here's a flashback to our circular motion unit. Remember how theta is equal to the angle subtended right here divided by the radius. So here we have theta equals s divided by r. This information is going to come in play in just a second. Let's go back to this familiar diagram of single slit diffraction. The aperture is the distance S1 to S2, and it is denoted by B. And point O is where the central maximum is located. Point P is the first minimum, and this angle theta is half the central mi maximum. If we drop a line perpendicular from S1 to N, this angle theta here is equivalent to this angle theta here. When we take the difference from S2P and subtract that from S1P, we know that this would be some whole number of wavelengths because there is constructive interference occurring at this point. If we wish to know what this wavelength is, all we need to do is take the sine of theta, we have the opposite over hypotenuse, and we get sine of theta equaling the wavelength divided by b, which is the size of the aperture. Now going back to our circular motion 
Remember that equation. Because the angle theta is so small, the sine of theta is equal to theta. And thus we get our equation of theta equaling lambda divided by b. This equation states that the angular position of the diffraction minimum theta located here is proportional to the wavelength and inversely proportional to the width of the slit, which is b. You can use this equation to solve single slit diffraction problems. Let's do one. Here we have an example of a helium neon laser light with a wavelength of 632.8 nanometers and this is being sent through a 0.300 millimeter wide single slit. What is the width of the central maximum on a screen one meter from the slit? So we want to know what the width of this entire portion right here is. Go ahead and try to solve this and then start the video back up. So what we have is we have this equation for single slit diffraction. When I plug everything in and I changed all of my values here to be in meters, I got an answer of 2.10933 times 10 to the negative 3. If I take into account significant figures, 2.11 times 10 to the negative 3, and that is for this angle here. Now that we know what theta is, we can actually find what s is, this distance here, in order to find the full length of the central maximum. If we know theta, we know we can take the tangent of theta, and that would be s over this distance here, which would be 1 meter. Now, one of the things that we need to do is just plug everything in. However, we don't have to deal with tangents and sines. Because the angles are so small, we can just say that the tangent of theta equals theta. Therefore, we have 2.11 times 10 to the negative 3. We have everything we need solved for s, and we get a total of 2.1 times 10 to the negative 3 meters is how much this space right here is. Now, we also know that we need twice that much, so all you have to do is multiply it by 2, and you get 4.22 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. Okay, so we're finished with all of our T-notes. Be ready to use this information in class.